Hi there, and welcome to another Destiny Tracker Raid Guide. I'm KillerB61, and today we'll be bringing you through the King's Fall Raid and what to expect in the new 390 version Bungie has released. Nothing has changed mechanically. Just a few tweaks on the loot table, which include a wider range in armor and weapon drops in Golgoroth and Warpriest, Adept Primaries, and Raid Armors with Ornaments. The Adept Weapons that are now available here from the Challenge Modes include Zuli's Bane, the Void Hand Cannon, Anguish of Dristan, the Arc Auto Rifle, Smite of Moraine, the Solar Pulse Rifle, and the Doom of Chelchus, the Void Scout Rifle. The entrance portion of the raid is actually pretty simple. The aim of the game is to collect all 12 relics and bring them to the entrance. Two relics spawn at a time along either path to the left and the right of the original spawn. What you're going to want to do is you split the team up into twos, two go left, two go right, and two stay in the center. One person on either side will collect the relic, the other will kill the adds and shoot the doors down. The guys in the center deal with the adds that spawn in the middle and help the doors open to lead to the main room. When all relics have been slammed, the portal to Oryx's throne realm will open and you can all run through. After making your way through the first jumping puzzle, you will reach the totem's room. Here we will need to split the team into threes so we can have a sort of a relay race. One from each team will stay in the center to start while two go towards the totem. One person will need to pick up the orb to protect you from the poisonous smoke that covers the totem rooms. After picking up the orbs, that person will receive a countdown of about 30 seconds called the Brand of the Unraveler. When the countdown ends, a person will need to be in the bubble to transfer the brand, and the previous holder will receive a Death Singer's power times 10 multiplier. Take this to the center plate and stay on the plate till the multiplier is done counting down from 10 to 0. As the first person runs to the center, the third should rotate to the totem so the current brand holder can transfer the brand when his time is up. Repeat this about 10 times to complete this encounter. Now let's talk about the War Priest Challenge Mode. The challenge mode here is to have a different person hold the aura every round. Split the team into twos, going left, middle, and right. Stand on each plate to start the encounter. After the couple of waves, of adds have been taken out and the major knight has been killed, the rear of the three floating pillars will start to glow in the order you need to stand on the plates. The person that stands on the third plate will get the brand of the initiate times five multiplier. The team will need to stand in this brand to be able to damage the war priest. The brand holder's job is to extend the multiplier as long as possible as the countdown drops down to two to four seconds. The holder will need to shoot an add to reset the timer and drop a multiplier by one. Once there is no time left, the war priest will end the damage phase by calling upon the oculus. Just hide in the shadow of the pillar till he is done absorbing the monolith power. Repeat this process until he is dead. Each monolith absorbed will give him a new taking power, so taking him down in two rounds is very much advised. Black spindles, sleepers, fast reloading snipers, and a bubble and tether would be helpful in increasing your overall damage output. Now you've made it to Golgoroth. The challenge mode here is to have every person in the fire team capture Golgoroth's gaze each damage cycle. If someone dies before they get the gaze that cycle, Golgoroth needs to die in that cycle. If they die after they get the gaze, he can be taken down in the next cycle. If you're wondering, one damage cycle is a round of everyone doing damage and capturing his gaze. It would be recommended to make sure you have at least one bubble for this encounter. So before you start the encounter, call out the order in which you're going to take the gaze. One and two have different jobs to everyone else, so make sure they know their jobs. After ads have been killed, have the bubble run into the left tunnel and pop his bubble. Have everyone but one follow him. One should now jump onto a platform on the left and aim to take the front left bubble down. Then take Gogoroth's gaze and drop down to the floor on their right. When the gaze has been taken, everyone in the bubble jump into the pool and start damaging him. One should be counting down the gaze timer so that two can be ready to get out and jump on the bridge across from one. On one and two seconds, the second gaze should be taken and everyone else needs to jump up to the bridge, waiting in line to take their gaze. As each person takes the gaze, they need to run down towards the entrance, so Golgi turns his back to the rest of the guardians waiting in line. When all six people have taken the gaze, the damage cycle is done, 
and the adds will spawn again like at the beginning. Repeat this cycle until he is dead. Upon entering the throne room, one person will get torn between dimensions. You will notice four platforms upon entering this room. All platforms will be called out from this door, front left, front right, which is the furthest away, and back left and back right, which are the closest to the front door. When the person gets torn, a brand reclaimer will spawn in the air. The aim is to get the person that is torn up to the brand so they can break the sister's shields. To do this, three people will stand on the platforms in order to create the stairway for the guardian to get the brand. The first platform will always be the one counterclockwise after the brand. So if the brand is on the front right, you start from the front left platform and jump on them one after another in a counterclockwise fashion. Standing on the platforms in order will spawn the floating steps with an orb on each one. Standing on the platforms wrong and the orbs won't spawn and you will need to start again. Once the brand has been reached, the torn person will need to jump in the bubble of the sister that is not glowing red very important there, and burst their buckle like a jerk, and jump down to the team so everyone can kill her. When the Heim of Weaving countdown is done, make sure everyone is still with the brand holder while the map is cleansed, and as soon as the animation is done, they will randomly make someone torn again, and you will have to repeat the process with the other sister until she is dead. So by now you've been on quite the journey. You've killed the war priest, you've killed Golgoroth, you've killed the sisters. Now you're ready to kill Oryx. So the challenge mode here is to take all of Oryx's health down in one go. That means 16 bombs need to be detonated at once to take him straight to his final stand phase. Before you start, assign one runner, three platform holders, and two damage dealers. The runner will be the one running the torn dimensions and will hold the protective bubble. He needs to jump up to get the brand claimer, steal the brand of immortality from the vessel that comes out of the ship, and make his way to center to meet the team. The three platform holders call one, two, and three. This is the order in which they jump on the platforms. One is always the one that Oryx slams with his fist, and the next two are the ones counterclockwise after that. When each platform is triggered, an ogre will spawn in the corner next to it. Killing these light ogres will drop one bomb. The aim of the two damage dealers in the center is to take the ogres down every round in the exact same spot so the bombs are in the same place. So a weapon of light with sleepers and snipers are very effective here. Touch of Malice doesn't work with this blessings bubble anymore, so it's useless with this strategy. Every time an ogre is killed, a light eater knight will spawn on the opposite corner of the ogre, which needs to be the focus of the person on the platform or the people in the middle, not both. When all ogres, light eater knights, and the vessel is dead, and the brand is in the center, Oryx will open his chest, which you will have to shoot to stagger him. Then, just wait in the middle till Oryx rotates back to the center and spawns his echo. Kill his echo, and repeat this three more times till there are four bombs in each corner. On the last cycle, when all the jobs have been done and ads have been wiped, have one person count down from three seconds where four people will need to split up and detonate one set of bombs each. Wait for your name to pop up in the center corner before running back to the brand holder. Make sure the brand holder is damaging Oryx while everyone is detonating, otherwise Oryx won't take damage. If done right, Oryx will have no health and trigger a final stand where you have a limited time to do as much damage to him and kill him finally. So now you've done it. You've killed Oryx. You've completed the King's Fall raid. I hope you get all the loot that you are looking for. This wraps up the video. My name is KillerBeast61. You can find me on Twitter at Amin underscore Lamkita. Or subscribe to my channel here on YouTube, k, &K Media. We have a comedy-based channel. We have a lot of fun there. Leave a like on this video to let me know that you enjoyed it. Subscribe if you haven't already and hit the little bell icon so that you can be a part of the notification crew and stay up to date on all Destiny Tracker videos. Be sure to check us out on Twitch to watch our Destiny Tracker podcast at 8 p.m. Eastern Time. We have a new special guest for you every week, so make sure that you are tuned in for that. Please write in the comments for me which part of the raid you found the most challenging and what was your favorite piece of loot that you got. My name has been KillerBeast61, and I will see you in the next one.